Go download my free Legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub skills of Legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. I was just practicing rhythm here with the metronome, but the only point in it being here is that it illustrates when I'm tapping my foot. I discovered pretty early on a way, a simple way of practicing rhythm that is really easy to understand, and here it is. Um, as I said, this just illustrates when you're tapping your foot, and if you, if you play something uh, and you stop tapping your foot in the middle of it, it, it clearly shows you that you have work to do, because that foot should, you should be able to relate everything in the music to that basic beat. And if you can't, you're just floating around uh, above the music and trying to emulate that you're playing music, actually. So it's a really, uh, it, it's a bad thing. Let's call it a bad thing. If you want to be a, a well-rounded, uh, highly skilled musician, you need to be able to never stop tapping that foot. So the metronome is just a foot. You can't see my foot, you can see the metronome. So here's, here's that, I explain it to you in, in very simple terms here, and then you can increase the complexity. I'm just going to put the tempo down here. What I did was, I said, okay, first let's decide on a basic tempo. And we have four beats in the bar, so this would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, right? That's how we, we I'm not going to talk about notes here, so you can always add that on later. Um, but then playing that, just imagine you have, you play that and you do that with strumming. That's the most amazing thing on a guitar. We can have that percussive thing going. You can't do that on a piano or a saxophone, but we have a rhythm instrument here, actually. We have a percussive instrument, and we can exploit that. We can use that, right? And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to focus on, uh, on eighth notes, which is just one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. If you want to practice rhythm for soloing, just choose one string. I'm just going to play just the same note there all the time. I'm going to mute all the strings with my fingers here across uh, all the strings and then I'm going to, then I can push down my third finger here uh, every time I need uh, a note, an accented note. I can also just play the note and then, and then play it louder with my pig. Right? But as you can hear right now, I have one stroke in between each click, each foot. Right? So I say one and two and three and four and all my clicks here, all my foots are down strokes and all my up strokes are in between. So those are the and, right? So one and two and three and four and and. So let's hit all the down strokes now. Let's hit all the, let's do, go with the foot there. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And the up strokes are just percussive. And if you're practicing rhythm for playing chords, you can go, you can take a bar chord and then go one and two and three and four and then all the up strokes are just, right? Like that, but let's keep keep to the note here because it's when we try to solo that rhythm gets really complex, right? We're not playing the same rhythm all the time. We're playing all kinds of little rhythms on top of each other. So let's try to hit all the ands: one and two and three and four. And this is when it gets weird because the foot is moving down, and I'm accenting the up strokes, right? Okay, okay let, let's get a little bit more complex here. Let's hit the first down stroke on one, and let's hit the second upstroke. Not the first upstroke, but the last. So I would have, like, if I go one, two, three, four. I have the first downstroke would be one, two, three, four. Let me find the second upstroke. One, and two, and, right? 
That's, that will be the second up. So, so let me hit one and two and three and four and one and two and three and let me see if I can do that with the, with the tapping of my foot. So I go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Oh, if it's a chord, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, right? So let me hit the third upstroke as well. So I go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, and right? So that's the whole concept. It's so easy, or oh, so simple. Anyway, it's not easy, but one and two. Because you have these strokes, you can easily illustrate the subdivisions of the bar, the strokes you're not really uh, emphasizing or putting an accent to. And that gives you that cool uh, tool that you can use to build rhythms. And so what I did here was just choose first the tempo and the four beats and the bar, and then I subdivided them by saying, okay, I want one, one stroke in between each click. I could also have gone for three, as I said before, or I could go for... Uh, for uh, for four in between, so I go. Let me just uh, illustrate that just by so again one and two, and that was my that was my ba da da da, and that's how my hand moves. Then I could go for ba da 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 da. That's three, which creates ba 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 down up down up down up. Down, and then I can start practicing hitting each and every one of these strokes, right? Accenting each each and every one of them. I gotta have four. One, two, three. And that's da 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 da. And then I can easily go, okay, let, let me see what beats I can hit in there. And so what that means is that you can really sit with. When you practice this enough. You develop that ability to play what I just played in the beginning there, that you can you can start having fun using different rhythms here. and then changing the subdivisions of that. So this is the tool. Use it and use it today until you master every rhythm in the world.